Okay, so let's look at solving the equation 4 to the power of x is equal to the cube root of 128. And we're going to do this without using any logarithms or anything. We're purely going to use our index laws. So let's recap some of those. The ones I think that we may need to, that may come in handy are, if we have a to the power of b, and then it's raised to the power of c, we can express this as a to the power of b times c, or simply a to the power of bc. What about this one? With a to the power of 1 on b, we can write this as the b root of a. Or a variation of that is if we have something else, we, if we have, say, a to the power of c divided by b, so we have fractional powers here, we can write this as the b root of a to the power of c. So here the c goes inside of the root and the b is written outside of the root. Okay, so let's see how we go here. So we first have to express these in the lowest base. And what I mean by that is 4. Well, is 4 at the lowest base? Well, we can write 4 as 2 to the power of 2, right? So 2 squared. And remember, it's 4 to the power of x. So it's 2 squared now to the power of x. And by this first rule here, well, this is simply 2 to the power of 2 times x, or 2 to the power of 2x. Okay, now what about the, the right-hand side? Well, um, according to this law, the right-hand side is 128 to the power of the 3 goes on the bottom, and the 1 comes to the top, so it's 128 to the power of 1 third. So now the question is 128 at its lowest base. What can we express this as? So let's um, break this up into a few. Let's use a bit of trial and error here, which uh, there's nothing wrong with doing things by trial and error. So 128, what are the multiples or factors of 128? Sorry, uh, not multiples, but factors. So we have, if we divide 128, say by four, we have four times 32. So 4 times 32 is 128. 32 we can divide again, so we can say that it's 4 times... Uh, 32 we can divide by um, 4, so it's 4 times 8. 8 we can divide by 2, so 8 is expressed as 4 times 2. Okay, so we've got one factor here, 2, which is at its lowest base. So we've got times 2. Well, everything else is 2 times 2, isn't it? So it's 4 is equal to 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 2 here. Another 2 times 2 here. And one more 2 times 2 here. And all of this is to the power of 1 third. So what we have on the right-hand side is 2 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 by or to the power of one third. And that's again using rule number one. We have two to the power of seven times one third, which is equal to two to the power of seven on three. So now we have two to the power of two x is equal to two to the power of seven on three. All right, so we have a power of two on the left hand side and a power of 2 on the right hand side. So that means the indices must be equal to each other. So we can forget about the 2's, we can cover those up or cross them out and just say that 2x is equal to 7 on 3. And the remaining thing to do is to get x on its own which we can do by dividing the left hand side by 2 and if we divide by 2 on the left we divide by 2 on the right which is equal to multiply by a half. So that means x is equal to 7 thirds, or 7 on 3, times a half. So therefore, x is equal to 7 on 6. And this is the result that we are after. All right, I hope that this video has helped you better understand index laws and solving equations. Smash that like button if you found this useful, and please share it with your friends.
For more videos that may help you with your studies, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, I always appreciate any small donation because helping me will allow me to produce more content for you, which will help you and all of your peers and everyone else studying mathematics. All right, but for now, thank you for watching. Best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.